I never find it so hard to walk this this slope in my life. But remember, this is over 5,000 meters, and the oxygen level is just half of what you have in normal places. This video is about my road trip in Tibet and this time we went from Tuiwa village to Yadong county at India border. So let's talk about Tuiwa. Standing at 5,070 meters above sea level, it is referred to by Wikipedia as the highest administrative village and the second highest permanent settlement in the world. It is 30 meters lower than the highest settlement, La Reconada in Peru. But search with the keyword, the highest village on YouTube. Many YouTubers refer to Comic Village in India as the world's highest. This is not so accurate. Statistically, if Wikipedia is not mistaken, Comic stands at 4,570 meters, ranks only fourth globally. Anyway, let's start the story. Good morning, Internet. Welcome to my channel, Season 2, Anxin China. Today I am in Tuiba, the highest permanent village in China. I'm not looking uh, very attractive. So uh, I just woke up this morning. I had been sleeping with this uh, oxygen tube on and off uh, the whole night. So I had a quite good sleep. And I want to show you uh, this amazing view outside my hotel room. This is our hotel and uh, we three, we are the only tourists here because most people are quite afraid of staying here. Yeah, that is a view. This beautiful lake. And uh, this morning, we have a uh, quite uh, interesting trip ahead of us. So first of all, we are going to show you this village. The whole village of Toiwa live on animal husbandry and in February there is quite a spectacular thing. This is how it looks like in winter. Every February the whole lake will be frozen. It's icy blue and then all the, uh, the shepherds will pave a road by using stones and ashes and take the flock to the central part of the lake where there is an island. And then uh, the ships will have enough food. And then before winter uh, ice melt, they will take them back home. That's quite a spectacular thing. Yesterday, the wet weather was very uh, stormy. You can't see the mountains. But today, this morning, look. Uh, they're all together about a hundred households and they still take water on their back from the lake and then carry them all the way back home. Lowliest monastery. The lifespan of this village is said to be only 45 years old. Can we go to there is a thing that um, you don't really point the camera directly to the Buddhist uh, statue because it's not good. But I can at least film what it looks like inside. There are some very beautiful uh, wall paintings. So this is inside this temple. 
There are a lot of beautiful paintings. So yeah, at least you you know what it looks like inside. It's quite nice. Wow, look at this. So this is the other room. Ah, so those are all the script. And those are Jing Fan, the prayer, uh, the prayer flag. Remember, this is over 5,000 meters, and the oxygen level is just half of what you have in normal places. Which means that this is a, a shop. It's a small grocery store. Dago, Mm. 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 Mm.
。好的，谢谢你、啊。怎么了？我有一点点头疼。So I will be waiting for Zhao Anqing. They are、um, shooting videos about their car, and then later I will show you around in his house. This is a typical Tibetan house here. This is a small courtyard, and、uh, let's start from this one. So to the corner, this is a small toilet. Let me show you how it looks like from the outside. There are not so many people living here, so that's a toilet. And here is a place where you can, where the the waste falls. There is a small living room in the middle. That's a stove, and there are chairs, sofas to the side. That's. That's the waste they use to heat up the stove. This is again their living room. A sewing machine, some cupboard with beautiful decorations. This is where I had my noodle just now. It's a big,、uh, it's a big water tank made of copper. And again, here there is a cupboard full of cow waste. In the middle again, that is a stove. We cook water and also to heat up the whole room. Oh, eighty-eight. Eighty-eight, right? Eighty-eight, eighty-eight. Okay, so he is eighty-six, which is、uh, quite good. I woke up yesterday morning. Yesterday morning, my head hurt very bad. Yesterday morning, we didn't have any sleep. Wow, I'm so high. I'm so high. I'm so high. I'm so high. Ninety nine, which is impossible. How much? He is eighty six. You ninety nine? How can it be? No, no, no. Let's test. Why do you not believe me? I'm very strong. You are not saying you feel weak? Yes, I feel weak. You feel weak? 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 Now we are leaving. I'm so looking forward because after leaving this place, I will definitely feel better. 接下来我们去哪儿呀？呃，康马县。康马县。对，然后今天我们去亚东县。亚东是中国不丹印度三国交界的一个地方。Tibet from Google Earth from above, you will see there are、uh, a lot of lakes, and those lakes in Tibetan language is called Tsu, and they are、uh, formed from the melting、uh, snow from the big mountains. This one is called Duoqing Tsu. Probably it's not. It's just one of the ordinary, ordinary lake on the Tibetan.
Yadong changes our image of Tibet. Unlike the dry, arid Tibetan plateau, to the south of the Himalayas, the air is moisturing, the landscape is incredibly lush and green. Yadong extends south into the Himalayas between Sikkim and Bhutan, and since the 17th century, Yadong had been a booming trading market between China and India. But since 1960s, due to contested border issues, Yadong remains closed. Had it been a different case, Yadong would have become a booming port. Finally, we have reached China's border town called Yadongxian, and uh, the, the landscape has changed dramatically. Before, we've been driving through vast dry land, but here it's so green and it's also very moisturing it's not dry at all my head is my headache is gone because now the altitude is about 2900 meters and we are very close to bhutan and india so if we go to my uh, left hand side if we go that direction we will reach bhutan and if we go that side to my right hand side that's Sikkim, india we're very close to the border, to the gate. But however, the gate has been closed recently, so we're not able to reach the gate. Yadongxian is also a very nice and very modern town. It has a, it's very different from the traditional Tibetan towns that I've seen on the way. And here, uh, there are different populations. There are Tibetan people and also immigrants from inland provinces. For example, that is a which means they are from Henan and there are also a lot of Sichuan people uh, they open Sichuan restaurant here Hello so before entering, we do this. We knock twice, meaning that we are here. This ladder, it's just so steep. Filming is not allowed inside, so I can only tell you there are um, script and on the second floor and also on the first floor. So. This is the, the temple and if you look closely, there are a lot of beautiful carvings and it's all painted. Oh, it must be very scary for the kids to go down. Uh,请问你们是过来干什么的呀?去那个拜佛的吗? 好，那我拿着，等一会儿，等我一会儿。好的，好的，好的。给你们交换一下。谢谢，这个给你们。谢谢你们，谢谢谢谢，炸鸡的嘞。嗯。拜拜。拜拜。I guess that is enough for today's video. Uh, I am going to end my video here at this border town, Yadongxian. I hope you enjoy it. And if you're interested in my future trips in Tibet and in Xinjiang, you can
like and subscribe to my channels. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching and see you next time.